I'm Helen Emmett. I teach English here at Center. Um, I've been here for, well, over 20 years. Um, and I've been asked to talk a little bit about books I like. And of course, the problem is that I mostly do like books because I'm an English teacher. And so I could have gone up relatively randomly to my bookshelves and just picked three books up and, and I would talk about liking them because, and it would all be true. But I decided to um, take a more historical route. And so the first thing I thought that I would talk about is something that maybe people have read, which is James Joyce's A Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man. And this is the actual copy that I used in college. Um, and, um, you know, I was a first year and I was terrified of everything. We were freshmen then, but I was a first year. And, you know, you were, we worked really hard and you were trying to get smarter and it didn't seem like it was working. And we had this thing at my college called the six week paper in uh, the spring of your uh, first year. And so we were supposed to write a big paper. Well, I had the faintest idea of what to do. So I went to my teacher who was one of these people and talked like this and had little glasses down like this. And, and I adored her, but I was terrified of her. And she said, I think you should write on James Joyce. Well, all I knew about James Joyce was that it was way too hard for me. But when she said it, then I had to do it. And so I just poured over this book. I, you know, and, and was bewildered and, and astonished and, and complicated. And finally, I did actually write a 20 page paper on James Joyce with the, the first book, Stephen Hero, which was this sort of practice version of a portrait of the artist as a young man and the first three books of Ulysses, um, which feature uh, Stephen Dedalus, the hero. And at that point, I became less terrified of A, college and B, English. <laughs> so, so it really helped me a great deal. Um, and since then, I've taught the book oh, 10 or 15 times at least. And, and I was right to be scared of it. There's tons in it. It just, I mean, it's just an amazing puzzle as well as a wonderful story um, and lots and lots of deep stuff. Uh, but, um, in any case, um, it really sent me on my way to being a scholar, to being a modernist, um, all of those things. So when I think of a portrait of the artist, I sort of think that's what, that's what sent me on this journey. Um, well, so once on the journey, I went off to, to, to Berkeley for graduate school. Not, I didn't skip, by the way, my sophomore, junior, and senior years of college. Those were absolutely necessary. But, um, but I, I did end up going and um, um, was still studying modern literature, though, of course, they made us study lots of literature, which I am very thankful for because I have had to teach literature from about the sixth century on in English courses. Um, and of course, in humanities have had to teach things, you know, a couple thousand years older than that. So, um, you know, I, I, I was um, about to the stage where I was starting to write a dissertation on modern poetry and a brand new book came into the world. Um, and that was Toni Morrison's Beloved. And um, I had known I'd read a couple of her books. I had known of her. She had um, done a reading at uh, my undergraduate college. And then she came and read from this book at Berkeley. And it just took your breath away. And um, it was the first time I ever read a book that was brand new, sort of hot off the presses, that, that I knew was a classic, that I knew was absolutely going to be you know, top tier forever. Um, and so far, at least, I know that was 1987, so it's not quite long enough. It's what, 35 years or something. Um, but, um, you know, it's taught all over the world in, in lots of different classes, not just English classes, not just African-American studies classes. It's taught in history classes and sociology classes. Um, I just finished teaching it and, it, it met one of my tests for a great book, which is I find with, a, and this is how 
teachers can teach the same thing over and over and over. With a great work, you find something new in it every time you read it. With a not so great book, yeah, it may be the first reading, yippee, yay, yay, and then by the third reading, like, okay, yeah, I get it. Um, but, but this time I found tons of new things. My students found uh, tons of new things. And it is just in a striking novel that um, it's serious stuff. It, it, this is not a comedy. Um, but, but I think that anyone who's serious about thinking about America, thinking about slavery, thinking about mothers' relationships to their children, any of those sorts of issues, love, um, could really find something meaningful uh, in this novel. So that's my serious, deep book. Actually, they're all sort of serious and deep. And, and yet I really love comedy. So I feel sort of sad that I didn't bring something funny. But so this book, and I'm going to actually swing it around correctly this time uh, so that no too far, is called Hamnet. And it's by a, an Irish writer, and I teach a lot of Irish writers, called Maggie O'Farrell. Um, she lives in London, and I discovered her about a year and a half ago, and I was just blown away. Thought, oh, a brand new writer. Turns out at that point she had 10 books, and I was just discovering her. So I guess it was, I was a day late, she wasn't. Um, and um, Professor Mark, Mark Rasmussen got me this for Christmas. I knew that someone would get it for me for Christmas, so I didn't go ahead and buy it for myself. Um, and it is the story of Shakespeare's son, Hamnet, who died of the plague when he was quite young. And it's told mostly from the point of view of the mother, who you probably know as Anne Hathaway. And, um, and it, we're also told that at that time, Hamnet and Hamlet were considered the same name. And so they were used interchangeably. And so the reason I'm telling you that is not just so you could share that over dinner, but because, um, um, because naturally Hamlet is going to figure into this plot at some point. Um, it's so exquisitely beautifully written that I felt like I can only read 30 or 40 pages at a time because it felt like so the writing was so rich, you know, like, you know, there's a limit to how much ice cream you can eat. And, um, and then, but it's not sweet in that way. It's just rich. Um, and the story gets to a certain point. And, and mind you, these are, it's based on facts. So there isn't that much that's made up in it. Uh, lots of details are made up, but lots of details have been researched. So it gets to a point about 200 pages in, and it's a short novel. And I thought she has written herself into a corner and she will never get out. And I'm like, well, but I've gone this far on the journey. I'm going to keep going. And by Jingo, if she doesn't brilliantly solve the problem she's set for herself. So I, and I, I've talked to other people who've read it and they're like, yeah, there was that point. And I'm like, what's she going to do? And then, man, the ending is so worth everything. It's worth every minute of the journey. Um, and one thing I will say for Shakespeare lovers is that Shakespeare is a relatively minor character. And I don't believe he is ever called Shakespeare. So, you know, if you're, if you're expecting a little Shakespeare bio, that's not what you're gonna get, but it's really a stunning book. Um, and the kind of thing that scholars would like because we like our jobs and we just read stuff that overlaps with our job. But I can see um, like anyone who likes a good historical novel just adoring it. So those are three extraordinarily different books um, from three different eras of my life that are still totally good with me.